So welcome everyone to the new video and the topic of this video is uh, about the principle of corresponding states and how it is related with the van der Waals equation of state. So without doing any delay, let's uh, begin with uh, the principle of corresponding states. Now the principle of corresponding states, it states that uh, the compressibility factor of fluid is dependent only on reduced temperature and pressure or volume. In other words, what this means is uh, the fluids must have the same compressibility factor at the same reduced temperature and pressure or volume so what so simplifying it uh, what this actually means is that as long as the gases are at the same reduced conditions as long as they are at the same reduced temperature and reduced pressure it does not matter what components you are talking about it does not matter what is the nature of the substance you are talking about they are going to behave alike so for example if we have two fluids at the same reduced conditions what this says is they are going to have the same compressibility factor because from this law from this principle we can say that the compressibility factor is only a function of reduced temperature and reduced pressure or reduced volume so if they have the same reduced condition conditions they are going to have the same compressibility factor now what does compressibility factor measure the compressibility factor measures the, the deviation from the ideality so if they have the same compressibility factor it means the fluids are equally deviated from the ideality, which also means they are going to behave alike. They are going to behave similar. Now, what does this uh, reduced temperature and reduced pressure mean? Now, it measures how far we are from the critical conditions because it is defined as the ratio of the temperature of the fluid in a system divided by the critical temperature of the fluid. And if we replace this temperature by pressure or by molar volume, we can get the definition for the reduced pressure and reduced molar volume. Now what, do, now what does uh, van der Waals equation of a state has to do with uh, this principle of corresponding states? The thing is, this principle of a state, corresponding state, is generalized from the fact that the van der Waals equation of a state can be written in this form. The van der Waals equation of the state, it can be written in the form of uh, compressibility factor and in the form of reduced temperature and reduced pressure which is the main aim of the video. And I'm going to derive this fact on the next page. Now, before uh, deriving this fact, let's talk about something which we will be need needing later on to do derive this fact. So here I have a plot of PV diagram. And uh, this is the PV diagram for the pure substance. And in the PV diagram here, we have these lines. So these lines, they represent the isotherm, which means constant temperature lines. And this left part with the positive slope, it represents the saturated liquid. And this right part with the negative slope, it represents the saturated vapor. Now, as we move upward, or as we uh, increase the pressure, the horizontal line of the isotherm, they start shrinking. And at a point, these lines become a tangent to this dome. So the point at which these lines, this line becomes tangent to the, to the dome, it is called as the critical point and the corresponding isotherm is called as the critical isotherm and the pressure and the volume at this point is are called as the critical pressure and critical molar volume now this critical point has two interesting properties the first property is that it is the maximum point of this of this dome so we can say that the partial the first partial derivative of pressure with respect to the molar volume at this critical isotherm, at this critical temperature is going to be zero because it is the maximum point. And the second interesting property is that this crit critical point is going to be an inflection point to this critical isotherm. As we can see that there is a change in the concavity. So the second partial derivative of pressure with respect to the volume is also going to be zero. Now that we have these two interesting properties, we have everything that we need to derive the fact that the principle of corresponding states can be derived from the van der Waals equation of state. Now let's talk about the van der Waals equation of a state. So this is the expression called as the van der Waals equation of a state. So pressure is written in terms of the volume and the temperature. Now as I said before, the critical point has two interesting properties. The first property is that the first derivative is going to be zero and the second partial derivative is also going to be zero. Now if I substitute 
this p with this expression, I will get this expression. And if I do this first partial derivative, I will get this equation 1. Similarly, if I do the second derivative of pressure with respect to volume, which is in fact the first derivative of the first derivative, then I will end up with this second expression. And if I divide this first expression with this second expression, I will get this value of b. And if I substitute this b in this equation 1, I will get this value of a. So I will give you guys a minute to see how, the, how I ended up with this value of a and b. So now what we can do is we can convert uh, this Van der Waals equation of a state in this form to a form that involves uh, compressibility factor. So for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this expression by, P, by V by RT. And if I multiply this by V by RT in the left side I will have P V by RT which is defined as G which you all know which G stands for compressibility factor. Now if I multiply by uh, V by RT in the right side I will end up with this expression. And if I plug in the values of uh, B and A, which I obtained in the last page, uh, where B is this and A is this, I will end up with this expression. Now, if I multiply and divide by 1 by VC, I will have something like this. And if I rearrange uh, this part, I will get something like this. Now, as we all know, V by VC and T by TC, they stand for the reduced condition. So, V by VC is going to be reduced to volume and T by TC is going to be reduced temperature. So what this final expression says is that G is only a function of reduced volume and reduced temperature, which is in fact what the principle of corresponding states says. So this is how we obtained the principle of corresponding states. Now saying that G is only a function of reduced temperature and reduced volume is equivalent to saying that G is only a function of reduced temperature and reduced pressure. Because if we write this Van der Waals equation of the state only in its reduced condition, then we can see that as long as we have same reduced temperature and reduced volume, we are going to have the same reduced pressure. So this is the final conclusion of the of the Van der Waals equation of the state written in terms of the compressibility factor and in terms of reduced condition. So this proves where the this shows where the principle of corresponding states come from. So now let's see what this equation three has to say about what happens at the critical point. Now, we know that at the critical point, the pressure, temperature, and the volume of a fluid is going to be replaced by the pressure, temperature, and fluid, and the volume at its critical point. So the pressure is going to be BC, T, temperature is going to be TC, and V is going to be VC. Which implies that the reduced volume, reduced temperature, and reduced pressure at the critical point is going to be equal to 1. Why? Because, as I said before, the reduced volume is defined as the volume of the fluid in a, in a system divided by the critical volume. And at the critical point, the, volu the volume of the fluid in a system is going to be equal to the critical volume. So the ratio is going to be equal to 1. Now, if I replace this value of 1 in this equation 3, what I will get is I will get the value of G. And if I, and uh, what I will get is g is going to be equal to 0 0.375. Now what does this mean? So this means is that the compressibility factor for the Van der Waals equation of the state at the critical point is independent of a and b and it is going to be same for all the gases. So no matter what gas you have, what is the nature of the gas and what component it is made of, it is going to have the same value of the compressibility factor at the critical point. Now this seems really interesting. However, in reality, this is not true because in reality, the compressibility factor at the critical point is going to be between these values. So clearly, this is not right. This uh, principle of corresponding state is not right at its, at its critical point. So to make this correction, Pizer introduced a new parameter called as this omega, which is called as eccentric factor, which is going to be the topic of next video. I hope you understood. Thank you so much for watching the video.